you throwing a whole bunch of money down the drain, whether you're living in a sticks and bricks or whether you're living in an RV, how much money are you wasting every month? And maybe you're thinking about living in an RV and you're thinking, how the heck can I cut costs? So today I'm going to share with you my top 10 hacks for reducing costs and saving money while I live full time and travel in an hey RV. Hey friendlies, I'm Carolyn. Welcome back to my life living in an RV. So after seven years, I've learned a few ways to kind of cut costs living on the road. Whether I'm doing them myself or not, these are some things that I have learned along the way that I want to share with you today to help you plan and budget and give you some ideas for cutting costs. Before we get started, do me a favor and if you enjoy my videos, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button and even even if you've been around a while and you think you're subscribed, YouTube is always unsubscribing people, so double check for me. And give me a thumbs up, leave a comment, that all helps. Watch all the way to the end. Every little bit helps to keep this channel alive. So thank you all so much. All right, let's get started. Let's just jump right in. Hack number one is saving gas. Gas prices are on everybody's minds these days. So my number one, actually I have two tips here for saving gas. Number one is use an app like Gas Buddy so that you can find places along the way where you can get the cheapest gas prices. Actually, I have three here. Don't drive over 60, 65. I read recently that every mile you go after 55, you're gas mileage decreases exponentially. So the slower you drive, the better you're going to be at saving gas and the lower, of course, your cost is going to be. My biggest tip though for saving gas is just don't travel a lot. If you're coming out here out of necessity, just don't travel a lot. Find an area that has everything you need with enough national forest that you can move the minimal amount of miles, the minimal number of miles every two weeks. So you can have, I've talked about this before, you can kind of have a rotation. You're here for two weeks, you're someplace else for two weeks, you're someplace else for two weeks, and then you can go back to your original spot. Most national forests say you can stay two weeks and then you need to leave for 30 days check every national forest to make sure but find an area that you enjoy that has everything you need and just do a circuit in that area don't do a lot of traveling i just talked about how my cross-country trip cost me twelve hundred dollars in gas i spend way less than that i mean by the time i go back west it's going to be twenty four hundred dollars in gas i don't spend that much when i'm just traveling in one region so that's my number one hack for saving money Tip number two for saving money living in an RV or anywhere for that matter is to make sure you get an affordable cell phone plan like Mint Mobile. I'm really excited to announce a brand new partnership with Mint Mobile to bring you affordable cell phone service based on the nation's largest 5G network. You might have seen the commercials with Ryan Reynolds. Yes, he's one of the owners. Hey there, it's Ryan Reynolds, owner of Mint Mobile. Enticing, right? And he's been all over talking about how they are changing the cell phone industry by getting rid of the brick and mortar stores and providing service online only, which means they're able to bring you premium coverage without the premium price. As little as $15 a month, you don't have to sacrifice coverage, speed, or data because their business model cuts a lot of the overhead so that they can pass the savings on to you. And check it out, you can switch in as little as 15 minutes. If you have an unlocked device, regardless of what plan you had on that phone, as long as it's unlocked device, you can switch in as little as 15 minutes. Many devices have the ability to be able to install an eSIM card which you can go to their website right now. You can get an eSIM card and you can switch your plan in as little as 15 minutes. If your cell phone is not compatible, then you can order one by mail and it can be there in a day or two. And check it out. You can even order a free trial and it'll allow you 250 minutes at 250 texts and 250 megabytes of data to try out absolutely free without any commitment. So you can try before you buy. And as members of my audience, Mint Mobile has an amazing deal for you guys today. $15 a month for every one of their plans. So it's unlimited nationwide talk and text, Wi-Fi calling and text, and 10 gigs of mobile hotspot data for only $15 a month. 
I mean, imagine how much money you're going to save if you just pay $15 for your cell phone. What the heck would you do with that money? You could travel more. You could put more in your emergency fund. So use this link and the link in the video description below to get started saving on your cell phone plan with Mint Mobile today. And number three, boondock instead of paying for expensive RV parks. Like I said, follow the rules, go to National Forest, Bureau of Land Management, and all the other places, and I'll put a link uh, of suggested videos in the video description. I've talked all about how to find free boondocking and all the places that you can find boondocking. So boondock, instead of staying in expensive RV parks or campgrounds, even an annual a state park pass is going to cost money, whereas boondocking isn't going to cost you anything. So boondocking and dispersed camping is a great hack for saving money. The fourth hack I have for you for saving money is to find free dump stations. Dump stations have gotten more expensive since I've been on the road. You can find them for $5 and sometimes you can find them for $7, like in New York actually at the state parks, they're $7, which really isn't bad. Some places, you might have to go to an RV resort, it can be as high as $20. So if you use an app like Santa Dumps, you can search out free dump stations. Sometimes I notice in New York, the water treatment plants have free dump stations. Some states have free dump stations at their rest areas. I know, what was it, Alabama has them at some rest areas. Georgia has them at some rest areas. There's a couple states in the West too. Leave your comments below. Do hashtag dump station so that people who are on the road can uh, look in the comments and find the states that have free dump stations at their rest area. So if you guys know the states that do, leave the comments right now below. So that's it. Use a, an app like Santa Dumps, which is free, to find free dump stations. And you can often get free potable water as well. So that's my fourth tip for saving money living in an RV. Number five. Buy what you can afford. If you're just starting out, or even if you're already on the road and you've got these hefty payments that are, uh, you know, constant choke around your neck every month, you have to make an RV payment, it might be time to think about getting rid of it and downsizing to something you can afford. Of course, you're going to have to do your due diligence. You definitely don't want to buy something used that's just going to give you a ton of problems like Matilda did. But if you are planning your RV life and just starting out, don't go for the $100,000 rig that's going to give you a three, dollars $400, whatever, a month payment. Buy what you can afford. And as you save money living in an RV, which hopefully you will, I have savings account for the first time in my life living in an RV, you will then be able to move up. So start off with whatever you can afford, even if it's a van. If, if eventually you want to live in an RV, but RVs are really expensive right now after COVID, start with a van. Live in a van for a year. Save enough money so that you can then trade up. So just buy what you can afford and say no to debt, say no to payments. That's the huge way you can save money living in an RV. Number six, stop buying expensive detergents and soaps. And face care and makeup for that matter. <laughs> I don't know. I see a lot of women in the RV life who still like to wear makeup. For me, that was a, a, a joy and a liberation to be able to get rid of that living in this life. But even things like soap and detergent and laundry detergent, you would be you would be amazed at what vinegar can do. White vinegar, apple cider vinegar, and you can get a big thing for a couple bucks. So let's try to find alternatives to the things you're used to to buying the commercial things that you're used to buying that are super expensive and you would be amazed I can stay clean without all the fancy soaps and fancy face I don't use anything fancy on my face I use soap and water you don't have to necessarily spend money on really expensive commercial brands to stay clean and to keep your RV clean number seven and this is for women stop using so much toilet paper have you ever thought about how much toilet paper women use compared to men? And that adds up. So take a tip from backpackers and just use a pee rag. You can use a handkerchief. You can use, uh, there's micro 
by all the that <laughs> they actually sell p regs that are uh, antibacterial microbe whatever but they're expensive you don't need that on the trail all the long hikes i've done i've used a p reg it's a hanky you use it you hang it to dry you rinse it out every day and it's fine and you're going to use a lot less toilet paper which is going to save you um, a lot of money in the end and tip number eight, and this comes from Mickey, one of our Friendly Nation top contributors in our Friendly Nation Facebook group. And Mickey suggested using every bit of food that you have. Don't throw a lot of your vegetable scraps away. You can make soups, you can make sauces, you can make broths. If you're a meat eater, use every part, use the bone, use the fat, use everything to make broth. You can make soups ahead of time and put them in the freezer. And just don't be wasteful with any food that you have or any food scraps, you know, try to use every bit of food that you have. And there's a common misconception that eating healthy food is more expensive than eating prepackaged canned foods and things like that. That is not true. You can buy rice, you can buy potatoes, you can buy vegetables, and you can make big, huge pots of soup, put them in the freezer, and have them easy to grab when you're traveling. And that's going to cost you in the end a lot less than prepackaged um, processed food. So that's tip number eight. Tip number nine, conserve propane. So here are things I do all the time to conserve propane so that I, in the summer especially, I can go a month, maybe longer on 10 gallons of propane. It's pretty good, right? Propane runs my uh, refrigerator and my stove and my heat and my water heater. So here is my hack for saving money on propane. I never turn on the hot water unless I'm gonna take a shower. And I don't take very many showers. I usually sponge bath, sponge bathe uh, as often as I need to. Here in the humidity, I need to do it a lot more, but just sponge bathe. What I do is when I'm boiling water for my coffee in the morning, I boil a little extra. I put it a couple cups in a bowl. I wet a washcloth and that's how I bathe. So don't turn on the hot water unless you are going to take a shower. Uh, same thing for dishes. I just boil a little bit of water for my dishes. The second thing that you can do to save propane in the winter, instead of turning on the heat, bake something. So you get double duty out of your propane. It's going to heat your RV up and you get dinner at the same time. And hack number 10 for saving money living in an RV is to maintain your vehicle. It costs a lot less for maintenance than it does for repair. So check your tire pressure regularly, check your brakes regularly, change your oil every 5,000 miles, check your fluids. Just maintaining your vehicle is gonna save you a lot of money in the end. That's my 10th hack for saving money living in an RV. All right, so I hope you found this video helpful. Don't forget to check out the Mint Mobile discount in the video description below. It's a great deal. And a special shout out to all my patrons. We've got a lot of new patrons lately, so thank you all so much for joining and helping to keep this channel going and pay for everything that goes in to making videos. And I appreciate all of you who have been with me, who watch all the way to the end, who share my videos, who watch every single video and everything that you do to support my work here on YouTube. It means the world to me. So I'll see you next time. In the meantime, be happy, be free, and be kind. I'll see you soon.